What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today we're going to be taking a look at a little game called Startup Company. So have you ever like fantasized deep in the night about like organizing crews of programmers and like assigning them to management staff? This might be the game that finally makes those dreams go away. It finally makes them go away. I finally found something to make it go away. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I'm really happy to have you here today as we take a look at this and do our gameplay impressions of it. Let's play some Startup Company. New game! Uh, what do I want my development company to be called? Well, I'm gonna call them... I'm gonna call them Pseudoscience Inc. There we go. Looks good to me. And then we'll say next, and it's time for us to play a little bit of startup company. So at the beginning of the game, there's a couple things we gotta do. First, we need a loan, because at the moment, our pockets are broke. We have no scratch whatsoever, and I don't know if you know about this, but businesses require money in order to function. So we're gonna take a small little loan of like $50,000, $46,000 rounding up. We get $40,000, and then it's got a 30% interest rate. Holy bejesus. Did you walk down the street and get this from a payday loan place? 30% interest on that loan? Good lord, what is your credit score, man? Like four? Oh my god, 30% interest. Alright, let's go ahead and take the loan. Let's do this thing. I feel like this is a bad fiscal decision, but I'ma do what I'ma do. Uh, we got a couple of emails up here. They don't matter. They're from the developer just saying thank you for like buying the game and stuff like that. Uh, there's no tutorial to this game. You are mostly left to just kind of mash it out on your own. So along the way, I'm going to try and talk about the things you want to do at the beginning of the game as kind of the preliminary assertions, like the preliminary actions you want to take in order to get the game moving. And the first thing that you need is you need a workstation for any of your employees that you want to work there. And you can find that through this little purchase item thing right here. Uh, we start out with the beginner workstation. Your company will level up as you get more contracts and as you hire more employees and as they level up, uh, you'll move up the tiers and you'll get access to more things like research divisions. You'll get access to like engineering teams so that you can do all kinds of crazy stuff. Lead developers, managers, stuff like that. But for right now, all we really have are sales staff. All we have are sales staff and all we have are programmers. So let's go ahead and flip this around. I'm going to let them see. I'm going to let them face the glass wall in the front of the building because I feel bad. They're going to be in here all day anyways. And I'm a nice guy like that. Uh, the first thing we need is a couple of desks. So I'm going to put in a desk right there. We'll put in like a desk right there. Looks pretty good to me. And with three desks, maybe I'll go in on four. I'm going to play this one a little loosey-goosey. Normally I put in three desks, but since we're having fun here today, Ooh, I'm going to change it up. I'm going to do four desks. Hashtag risk taker. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to hire employees. And so that means we go to the recruitment tab under the employees thing right here. We need a sales executive. Uh, sales executives are the guys that are going to go find you contracts so that you can actually start assembling the back end of websites uh, so that you can start working on the graphical attachments to websites and stuff like that. And then you can sell that based on the contract work. It's going to cost us about two grand to go ahead and recruit for this individual. That's okay. I can live with that. Let's go ahead and spend a day looking for a sales executive. I'm going to turn time on right there, and we should start getting applications very shortly for this job. And there's one right there, Gussie Myers. Gussie Myers is pretty good. Uh, so this little score right here is how good they are at their job. So they do their job 144% speed. Uh, if you get something that's like 80%, you don't want that because they also take into account their mood bonus. Uh, so something you want to think about here is that if they have 140% four percent proficiency at their job that means they can be at like 60 percent mood before they start working slower than normal now this number does go up as you promote them and as they level up this will get up to like 200 300 400 percent depending on how fast you want to move this is their salary for the month don't worry about that that's not a one-time payment that's what they get paid for 30 days worth of work and so you've actually it's about 200 bucks a day per employee and so once you have a full staff here it'll cost you roughly 1500 bucks a day to run the place i will hire her because Gussie Myers is quite good at her job. And rather than wasting time, we're going to go ahead and cancel that recruitment contract. Then we're going to go down here. We need some developers. We need to make some money, and we need to make some objects. Uh, you will note that our inventory tab is incredibly empty right now. This game uses things called modules and things called components, and those are what you sell to clients in order to make money, rather than just, like, programming a website yourself. For example, Twitch TV will contact you in this game, and they'll be like, oh, well, I need two back-end components, and then I also need a back-end module. And so so your lead developer will whip out the back-end module, your developers will whip out the back-end components, and bam, you'll turn it in and you'll get paid. And it's actually kind of a nice organizational system that keeps it all... It keeps it all manageable. It makes it all feel like loot, essentially. Like, every single time you create something, it just goes into your inventory. And, like, we know that it symbolizes, like, a brick of encryption code or something like that. 
but in re or SMTP or whatever else, but in game it's just like a piece of loot that you now have that you can sell to developers. I kind of like that. I think that was an elegant way to fix that. I'm going to put my sales staff in the corner right there. Uh, there she is. So she's going to be sitting right there. We need to go ahead and we need to recruit some developers. Um, I would like to recruit. Let's get some developers. We're going to put three days on this one because I want to make sure actually that's kind of expensive. Let's see who we get first. We'll see who we get because our, our, our finances are going to stack up a little bit. We're going to have troubles. So let's get that moving right there and we will see what happens next. Uh, we can jump to the start of the day. We've only got one application so far. Let's see here. So yeah, Mamie Curtis, she's 139, so she's a pretty good programmer. 117 is still respectable, so I will take him. At the beginning of the game, we're trying to save money right now, so beggars can't really be choosers. As long as they don't have like 70% efficiency, we can move forward with the gameplay. Let's go ahead and assign Lewis to that desk. We will assign... Nanny to that desk, so she's got 145% proficiency, he's got 122% efficiency, because for whatever reason, his mood started out... Wait, what? He should be at maximum, right? What was his What was his stats? Hold on. So he started out at base speed, 117, he's got an office bonus. Okay, that's fine. Perfect. Uh, every single thing you put in your office, like potted plants, coffee machines, stuff like that, uh, they will make your guys upgrade their speed, too. So having a baller-ass office that looks like the kind of place that a tech startup would like live inside of is something that you probably want to focus on. Uh, with these cats over here, what we really want to do with them is we just want to get them started on development tools. So I'm going to have Lewis get back-end objects and UI components. And then I'm going to have Nanny. She's going to work on network components. And she is going to work on database components. We're going to start her off on network components. You start off on UI components. And so there it is. They should actually start working. And you will see they're programming now. They're creating objects that we can sell to potential employers. Let's go ahead and jump back in on him. I would like you to get a back-end component done now. Now, the game is a little click-heavy, but we can fix that. That's the good thing about this, is that even though the game can get a little bit click-heavy, you can get rid of a lot of the micromanagement of choosing like what everybody makes every single time by hiring guys called managers. We can't do that just yet. Ooh, we got a few more applications. Who do we have here? We've got Chris Howell. Absolutely, Chris, come work for me. There we go. And so Chris will be assigned to this desk right here. And then Chris Cross can make you bounce, bounce. He's going to work on encryption protocols for now. And so if he can just stack up some encryption, that'd be great. The next thing we're really going to want here is we're going to want a manager. That's the part that's really going to make this thing fly. Because if you look at these guys right here, there's a little tab right here that says auto repeat. I'm in my nice game that I've played right now that I've got about three hours into. I've got a bigger building. I've got like 25 employees. And every single aspect of my development is run by a manager so that I have enough programmers to where every single... So I have one programmer for every single one of these. And then managers making sure they just auto-create them the entire time. And my art team has the exact same thing. And my lead development team has the exact same thing. And so the clickiness of the game goes down. I do think the clickiness is a problem at the beginning of the game. Like you are doing a lot of clicking when you're managing all these random little dudes especially when you speed the game up but you can get around it once you get to like tier two tier three let's go ahead and search for a contract because we need to get some xp so we can move up the tiers let's get this thing moving oh we're jumping to the start of the day yay next day we made it through our first couple days of work go ahead and give me a network component right there we have a job on this side so let's respond to that contract uh, it's high urgency these guys want us to deliver a database component and a back-end component that booty component that's what i call that back-end that caboose component that donk that dunk back end component, uh, and they'll pay us $2,000 for it. I'm going to accept it and we'll deliver it right now. That's why we future stock. And that's going to allow us to level up to tier two, which has given us access to a couch. Uh, we've got like a bureau right there, and we've got a coffee machine on that side. We also additionally have access to the designer, who is going to be the art assets for our team. So you've got to run the programming team, you've got to run the art team, you've got to lead. Development team, the lead development team takes the stuff that these guys are making right here and packages them all into things called modules, which can be sold for even more money. And so, you know, there's lots of cool little things you can do in this game. It is a simple game, but I did find it to be weirdly addictive. I played it for two or three hours last night. I sat down to, like, mess around with the game, and it's weird how frequently this happens. I sat around to mess with it just before I did, like, my little gameplay impressions video of it because I, I don't like going into something not knowing, like, the controls and what's going on and, like, what I should be working on. This was one of those games that I felt like if I didn't know what I was doing, I was probably going to make a shitty video. And I don't, I don't want to make a shitty video. I want to make a good video. 
Uh, we have a contact over here. A high urgency contract for 2000 bucks from Readit to deliver a network component for $2,000. Let's go ahead and do it, and we will deliver that instantly. Let's make a little bit of money. Today, I'm trying to actually ramp up production. She's right there. We'll put her on that. We'll put him on encryption components. Luckily, encryption components take forever to make. $1,200 for Punchbox TV. They would like a UI component and a database component. We will take that. I should have a database component up very shortly. We'll replace that UI component that we just lost to keep those network components going and that should be good enough. There's another 1200 bucks. Let's go ahead and search for another contract because we basically have most of the stuff we need in order to do our jobs properly. You do have to manage everybody's morale on this game. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, the little smiley face next to their person is how happy they are about their job. And that'll be actually subtracted. So their mood negative. So if you take whatever their mood is, the deficit between that and 100%, so if they're at 66% mood, 34% is what will be used against their baseline proficiency at their job. Oop, I'm wasting time right now. Uh, it's low urgency for Quitch for two database components. Let's go ahead and do that. So they want database components. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade his knowledge so he can make database components. I'm going to upgrade his knowledge so he can make database components. It's always nice to have programmers that can do everything in this game. Once you've got like eight programmers working for you and they can all make stuff... It goes pretty quickly because you can basically swap the entire team on over at the exact same time and produce like a bajillion of whatever the modular component is you need in order to get like this crazy high priority job done. Uh, managers. So the managers got all kinds. Of, okay, so we've got access to a manager. Now that's really good because managers are helpful. However, we don't have a lot of money. So at the moment, we are going to have to watch our contract. So as soon as this is done, we're going to go ahead and turn that in. There we go. So that's another $1,500. Oh, how the money flows. The money must flow. I think we need another database component. We probably need, I'll do two more database components. And then for this individual over here, let's go ahead and get him started on a back end component just to keep us nice and rounded out. We'll jump to the start of tomorrow and hopefully this new contract will be lucrative. The price of the contracts does go up as you get further into the game. Uh, they want an encryption component and they want a network component. We have that, there we go. A little bit more money. Let's try and do as many jobs as we can for today because I'm trying to get paid so we can hire that manager by the end of the day. If we can get a manager by the end of the day, I think we're in really good shape. That's high urgency for $5,000 and we already have the stuff on hand, so we might as well turn it in now. Let's go ahead and search for another contract. These guys are idling. Go ahead and give me... You can learn how to do network components now because I've got a little bit of extra money. You also do a network component and you bang out another encryption component, please. Thank you, sir. And that'll be about nine hours for the encryption. These ones are about four hours. Uh, on this side, we've actually got a job for Punchbox TV on medium priority, but it requires a graphical component. We don't have designers on our team yet, so unfortunately we're not going to be able to scribble up any stick figures or anything to make people more intuitively understand how to use their site. So they will go stick figureless. They will go stick figureless. What a sad, cruel world to force a man to go through his job stick figureless. We have a high urgency job for daily movement. Uh, which is one network, three or one network, one database, and two UI. I'm gonna take that. We'll deliver it. Money, money, money. We're making money slowly. We're starting to creep back up there. Once we start to get to like, make me a network component, please. There we go. Get me another job. I think we're a little bit low on some components, but I think we'll be okay. Get me a UI component right there. Uh, they're gonna need to take vacations pretty soon too because. Unfortunately, you can learn how to do that because we actually had a little windfall of cash right there. Uh, you do want to develop your programmers and make it so that they learn to do stuff. This has art assets involved, so there's not much we can do there. Uh, there's a wireframe component that needs to go into this. I would love to do that job, but unfortunately, I cannot. If you decline a contract, you can't take a contract from that employer for another 30 days. So declining too many contracts in a row can lead to like problems. I would actually like it if the game would not offer you contracts for which you don't have the employees to actually fulfill those contracts. Because it's kind of self-terminating. I've never actually run out of employers, I'll say that now. But I have had to decline like four or five contracts in a row before. Just because they all ask for things that I don't have. And there's no way to like politely decline. Like in real life, you just wouldn't click the contract if it was posted somewhere. You wouldn't call in. You'd be like, oh, we don't have the manpower or the staffing to do that. So I'm just not even going to contact them. And this, it's like they scout you. And then if you turn them down, they get offended for 30 days. And so you can't get another job from them. I would probably move the goalposts on that a little bit. In fact, I would actually like to see a reputation system put into the game where employers will pay you more or less based on how they feel about you. When you turn down a contract, you lose a little bit. When you complete like a hard contract on high priority, you get a bunch of reputation. And then you can also 
also parlay that into stock prices and things like that because you can't buy stock in this game. We haven't looked at that tab yet, but we will. Uh, we got three modules for Twitch TV, so we'll go ahead and deliver those. Very nice. Find me another job, sir. We need to get paid. I got to get this up to like 35, 40,000, and then we'll start hiring people to automate a lot of the things going on in here. Go ahead and make me a database structure. We've got another component right here. Hey, fixed price $2,000 for database and encryption. Go ahead and do it. Although with that, our stocks are basically going to be topped out or tapped out on the things that we have. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add another desk down here. And this desk is going to be the manager's desk. I think, where will the manager sit? I don't know. It doesn't really matter right now because we're just like a little startup company. But I'll put that in right there. And then we're going to put out a call. Let's go to recruitment and we'll put out a call for a manager, which is going to be the next part. After that, we'll start our design team and we'll get our lead developer. But for right now, we need a manager before anything else. Managers give you a baseline amount of like 40% speed to anything you're trying to produce, which is really, really cool. And then on top of that, they make it so these people will just produce the things that they're supposed to be producing all by their lonesome without me having to click. And frankly, I do like clicker games, but for whatever reason, I just don't like clicking through the, memory, the, the little menus in this game. And so once I have it all automated, I actually like the game a lot lot more and so I'm trying to get there as rapidly as possible his moods falling off which makes me a little bit sad but we'll figure it out 103% manager I'm inclined to just wait it out for a minute and kind of see what happens go ahead and search for a contract here we'll see if anybody applies overnight 101% there we go a couple more people in there we got anybody that's like good at their job 122 I'll take Adelaide that's fine we'll take her yep the heiress to the Welch's fortune. There it is. So we've got Adelaide. Adelaide to me always sounds like a drink. Like, you'd be like, mm, give me some of that Adelaide. Either that or it sounds like a hard narcotic. You'd be like, yeah, boy, we tripping off that Adelaide right now. I don't know. That's what it always sounded like to me. Uh, so if you have less employees being managed, you do get a bigger bonus. But frankly, you've got... You've got, unfor you, you've got a bottleneck. I can only have three more employees. And so this manager, I got to get bang for my buck here. And so there it is. She's now going to work there. She is running all three of these people, which means these people don't need to be clicked anymore. I can just assign them to whatever it is I want them to do every single day. And they'll just mash that out all day endlessly. And this is where you're really going to start to pile up some of the things that you have. Uh, we got a low urgency contract for Punchbox TV to get two encryption components put together. I'm okay with that because we have one right there. Actually, it's low priority, so we might as will not even stress about it. I'm just going to wait for him to get it done. These guys can start accumulating some of the other little pieces of inventory that we have around. I should probably put somebody on databases for a little bit. But frankly, what I like to do is I like to let them stack up to 10 to 15, and then I'll switch the workflow until I have like 10 to 15 of everything. And then I'll do like eight jobs in a row and make like 60 grand. It makes me happy doing it that way. Uh, moods are starting to slip in here too. So we do have an employee vacation coming up fairly soon. That's ready to be delivered, so we'll go ahead and stack that on in, and we've become Tier 4. And so we've got a lead developer now. Lead developers, what they do is they take the component modules, or I'm sorry, the components, and so they'll take these things right here, like components, and they will turn them into things called modules, which are assembled chunks of like a website, or of like a game, or of a piece of art, or of like a piece of promotional material. And so, for example, a network component and a back-end component gives you a, I think it's called a back-end module. And those get requested all the time. Like, people pay through the roof for back-end modules. And so they're nice to have around. You should probably have a couple in storage at any given time, just in case. I'm going to wait till everybody's mood slips before I send them all on vacation. I want to see what kind of money I can make first before we go out on, like, a three-day vacation for the company. Made emergency on that one, and we have all the stuff available. He'll be done with the encryption component, hopefully by the end of the day. If he's not, then that's unfortunate. There we go. We've managed that contract. There's another three grand. Go ahead and find me another one. More money we make, the better. Hopefully their moods will pop back up at the start of today. No, they didn't. So actually their moods are officially kind of morale is low. Morale is low. You know, it's day three. Um, the SMTP is not cooperating. Things are going poorly. Oh, I really want to do that contract, but I don't have anybody that can do it. If I could just get one wireframe, we could make 10 grand right now, but... I don't have anybody that can do a wireframe, and I don't really have the money for a hiring spree right now. I'd prefer to stay away from it. There's a good one, though, right there. Hell yeah. New contract. That one actually doesn't tax our stocks at all, and we get paid almost $10,000 for it. So there it is. That's going to be the runway into our vacation right there. As soon as people get these contracts done and we start getting a little bit of money, I'm going to send everybody on vacation for three days. Uh, setting people on vacation has the function of resetting their mood. Uh, their mood gets better when you do that. So I need network components. You've got a network component. Uh, scratch that back end that you're working on right now. Yep, scratch your back end. 
That's what you're that's what you're hired to do here, programmer. Just sit around and scratch. Go, Code Monkey. Code Monkey make coffee. Code Monkey make network component. We might be a little late on this one. We got five hours left. I don't know if he's gonna get his done just because of his mood penalty. Hopefully they get it done. I can't guarantee that they will, but Oh, we need a UI component too. Shit. I didn't realize we were low on that. Oh man. Weak. We're about to have problems. We're about to have problems. They're about to be upset with me. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, you don't like, you don't lose anything if you don't deliver on a contract on time. Uh, you do, however, well, you do. You lose a little bit of money. There's, oh, we made it. Cool. Very nice. And everybody go on vacation now. You guys have earned it. You made me $20,000 in two days. You have absolutely earned a vacation. Be on your way. Paid for by the company. Uh, we will lose a little bit of money from sending them all on vacation simultaneously, but I find it's easier to do it this way. Um, you can organize A teams and B teams and stuff like that, but the problem is, what I like to do is that if you send them all on vacation at the same time, you can click one button and keep playing the game. Whereas if you send half of your staff on vacation and half of them not on vacation, you still have to play the three days that everybody else is away, but you're doing it with like half the staffing you would normally have. And so I would just rather take the financial hit. Like it cost us a couple grand to send everybody on vacation at once, but we're back in the saddle instantly, like right when we get back up. We're not running at half capacity and half capacity drives me crazy. I'm not a half capacity guy. I'm the kind of dude that wants things to move quickly. So there it is. UI components are looking pretty good right now. I would like for you to work on database components, please. Database components. We've got enough encryption components to make me happy. We'll probably go on a hiring spree pretty soon. Ooh, high urgency for $10,000. Hell yeah, get that money. There it is. Getting that good dosh up in here. And so now we can get a researcher. We can get free beverages. So you can give your employees benefits. Uh, if we go to... Let's see here. If I go to... My employees menu, is that not the one I want? Maybe it's this one. Company profile is where it's at, there it is. So we go to company profile, and then we go to benefits, and we can give people retirement plans, that'll give them mood bonuses, so it takes longer for their moods to go down. We can buy free drinks every day. Oh, we can give free gym memberships along with working here. We can get extended retirement plans, paid transportation. I mean, you can get all kinds of little things in here, but they do add up, so make sure you have cash flow before you start doing that stuff. For right now, the next thing we need is we need a art team. So I am going to hire two designers and a lead developer. Let's go ahead and I'm going to spend... Three days looking. No, let's just go with one day. They're just beginners anyways. It's no biggie. We're on T5, which means we can level up all of our employees to level 2 now if we want, which will give them like a 50% speed increase. However, it also increases their salary by about 200 bucks a day, I think it is. Is it? No, it's 20 bucks a day because it's 1500 a month, I think, is the increase in their pay when you promote them. And so, yeah, 1500 a month, it should be like... Divide that by 30, like 50. There we go. 50 bucks a day per employee. I said do the math. I don't know why I said 20 right there. That's kind of a weird slip. I don't know. My brain's running on autopilot right now. I'm in the process of resetting my sleep schedule at the moment because I'm doing a lot of new things, and that requires me to be fresh. But uh, I like him. Yeah, Trevor Simmons works. I'll keep her, but what we'll do is if somebody better comes in, we'll hire somebody else. She's a good candidate. Don't get me wrong, but... She's not super good, and every now and again I buy an employee who has like 130%, and then five seconds later somebody... Ooh, we get to bid on this one. Okay, so every now and again, and more frequently as you get further into the game, you're going to get to bid on contracts, and the person who bids the best gets the contract. Now, the thing you want to look at is the urgency with the contract, uh, the colors match up right here. And so you know that the target price is somewhere in the yellow region. Normally, it's towards the bottom, like right here, if you want to get the contract. If you don't want to get the contract, you can go up here. However, it is entirely possible, like I've lowballed stuff for like 12 grand that ended up other companies bidded like 27,000 on it. And so it's it's a little all over the place sometimes, but most of the time that's the rule you can go by. Uh, you match up the color and then you go to the bottom of the spectrum and you'll probably win that bid. I'll send the offer out for 4,600. So 86, and see what I mean? There it is right there, we got it. Uh, let's go ahead and deliver that right now to make a little bit of extra cash. We are not. So what am I out of right now? I have no encryption keys and I have no... Okay, database components. I'm going to put you on encryptions after that UI is done. Go ahead and start mushing those on out. Uh, is she the only candidate we got that applied? Damn, I was hoping we would get more people that applied. 
recruitment Sova over too. I'll take her. It's fine. Her stats are good enough. It's not that. It's just that sometimes you get a better employee. It has not. Oh, we got the better workstations now too. Yeah, let's go ahead and use the good workstations then with the little stand-up adjustable desks. We'll go ahead and put the art team in right here. Good. With their artsy IKEA wood desks. And then what we'll do is we'll take these guys right here and we will assign Lenora Sharp to that desk. Uh, we are going to unlock all of her recipes first because I'm going to need them. And then we will put him in right there. We will do the same thing for him, even though it's expensive. And he's going to work on wireframes. She's going to work on blueprints. And the clicker game continues. Now, at this point, you can either watch this. She's going to have amazing stats. Oh, no, she's terrible. Good. I met her Sunday. It was yesterday. The girl I knew from 1990. Her eyes were hazel. Her name was Mabel. Sorry. Anytime I see the name Mabel, I have to break into song. It's required. My Goldfinger knowledge is not to be challenged. I don't know what my favorite Goldfinger album was. Like, I think Hang Ups is underappreciated. Like, I think a lot of people shit on Hang Ups, but Hang Ups was not a bad album. If we get a network component and a graphics component, we've got this thing. And he's making a graphics component. So as soon as he's done with that encryption, make me a network component, please. We'll get that all finished off. Our next hire is probably going to be a lead designer. Because a lead designer is going to help us out with making a lot more money. Oof, clicker games. All right, so once we get up to like sixty, seventy thousand dollars, that's when we're gonna move to a new building, and that's when I'll hire more art staff. I'll hire three more developers, so we'll have six programmers. We'll have three art guys. We'll have three managers. We'll have two sales guys. Basically, when you move to the new building, you want to have like a glut of hiring, and that's when money's just gonna start coming in like head over, like seriously, hand over fist. You're just gonna be shoveling money into your bank account and just being like, wee. I'm so rich, I've built a yacht out of yachts. Uh, so anyways, I'll see y'all in the next episode of whatever it is I do. This is my gameplay impressions of a game called Startup Company. Hope you guys liked it so far. If you want to see more, you know what to do. Bang on the desk. Leave lots of likes and comments down below. Be sure to check me out on Twitch TV slash Splattercat Gaming where I go live every single day at 3 p.m. Pacific time. And I just go till whenever, seriously. I stream till basically I run out of energy. I will see you all later. Thanks for stopping in. Hi do everybody.